welcome back today we will discuss a new topic called uh, flat slab we will see what is a flat slab what is the difference between a flat slab and flat plate and the is code provides two design methods for flat slab one is direct method and then the second one is equal and frame method so we'll discuss the important theory part and the coder provisions and if time permits the direct design method in this class and we will plan the equivalent frame method in the next class so directly into the topic what is a flat slab you can see on the left side the slabs are directly supported on the column in normal buildings there will be beams in between columns and the slab so the flat slab is a beam free it can be tell totally beam free because beam will be there at the periphery all the interior beams are avoided in the case of flat slab so what is the difference between a flat slab and flat plate on the right side you can see two pictures which shows a flat plate and flat slab it is very clear from the figure that in the case of flat plate the column same cross section is connected to the slab whereas in the case of flat slab there is a extra element which is meant for distributing the load from the slab to the column so these are called as a drop okay you can see this figure for a better understanding so this is all called as a flat plate as there is no extra elements and on the right side you can see a flat slab with drop pan so these are called as the drop and after you should remember these terms because all the coder provisions are based on these technical terms then second one is flat slab with column head so there are two ways of uh, basically stiffening the joint uh, joint that is uh, either by providing a drop and I, the second way is to make the column head enlarged so this is actually flat slab with column head and in, in the normal situations uh, or in general situations we will use the flat slab with a drop panel as well as the column head so now we are uh, clear with the concept we will see the definition a flat slab is a two way reinforced concrete slab that usually does not have beams and girders and the loads are transferred directly to the supporting concrete columns so you are now thorough with the definition of the flat slab uh, sorry So, that. so the IS code uh, provision section number 31 gives a detailed caudal provisions for the flat slab. So these are the things at a glance. I'll directly go to the code after this 31 flat slab general uh, regarding the proportioning, then the size of column head, size of drop, size of uh, for how to determine the bending moment in the case of a flat slab then the various uh, uh, like uh, definitions as well as explanations of the joint then then this is the one method proposed in the IS code direct design method what are the limitations of that and they have given some guidelines uh, for performing the 
direct strength sorry direct design method those provisions are uh, in these clauses of is code 456 and then 31.4 is and early for the equivalent frame method then also there are a large set of uh, clauses so it's actually a very vast topic the flat slab design and uh, all are advised to go through the code is456 and the related codal clauses for a better understanding so to introduce the topic to you we will go through the IS code provisions first in a little bit detailed manner and thereafter we will uh, directly go to the problems. So the flat slab, I will read through uh, general. The term flat slab means a reinforced concrete slab. Just a minute. Slab uh, with or without drops, supported generally without beams by columns with or without flared column heads so we have seen different arrangements of the flat slab like with drop without drop with column head without column head so all those things will come under the flat slab a flat slab may be a solid slab or may have recesses formed on the soffit so that the soffit comprises a series of ribs in two directions the recess uh, may be formed by removal or permanent filler blocks. That means that the bottom portion of the slab is called as the soffit. And uh, for the purpose of the close, the following conditions shall apply. Column strip. So, what is this column strip? It's very uh, important. So, if I put it in paint, say I have a big flat plate and I have so many uh, columns like this uh, sorry this should be in uh, line sorry I'll, I'll just uh, draw on that itself yeah this is also a column so we have uh, this is the total slab which is resting on four columns and for the purpose of design we will divide these into various strips i think a different color will be ideal so like this we are dividing the total uh, big slab into lot of strips Uh, this should uh, come such that it should, uh, should be uh, beyond the column. Yeah, so uh, this strip that is uh, from here to here, uh, included the column, are called as the column strip column strip and uh, this will be a different one this will be the panel strip we will see the definitions um, by as per the code column strip there is a strip which passes through the column it means that a design strip having a width of 0.25 into l2 so l2 is the uh, length in the statement uh, column strip means a design strip having a width of point 0.25 L2 so L2 is in direction of the bending but not greater than 0.25 into L1 on each side of the column center line so from the uh, each side of column center line this should be the overhang or projection where L1 is the span in the direction of the moments that are being determined measured 
sender to sender of supports and L2 is the span transfers to the L1 meshed sender to sender of support. So that thing is clear to us. Then comes the middle strip which we have uh, just seen. So uh, as I told, uh, these are the I'll, uh, just put it in a so yeah, these are the column strips even uh, this also will come in the column strip yeah. these are the column strips and the middle strips includes uh, yeah so this will be the middle strip this one and this one will come in the middle strip so middle strip means adjacent strip bounded on each of its opposite sides by the column strip so always uh, to the left and right of the middle strip there will be a column strip well understood panel means that part of the slab bounded on each of its four sides by the center line of a column or center line of the adjacent uh, span so panel means that a part of slab is a part of uh, the big slab bounded on each of it four sides by the center line of column or the center line of adjacent span so that means that uh, when you go to paint uh, i'll draw with a different color uh, this time i will use red so panel will be something like this which includes the uh, nearby column centers so means slab bounded on each of its four sides by center line of column and center line of adjacent span okay so this defines the different strips which we, which we need while designing the flat slab then for the design provisions we definitely need the thickness of flat slab uh, thickness of drop which we have seen in the ppt here like uh, yeah sorry so these are the drops this is uh, the drop in uh, reality reality means original picture and these are the column head as you can see okay i think you can see my uh, cursor uh, sorry just, yeah. so these are the uh, drop panel left side picture and this this column enlargement is called as the column head yeah so 31.2 gives the proportioning uh, like uh, the various guidelines for the thickness of flat slab uh, drop and the column heads so we'll quickly go through the thickness of the flat slab uh, shall be generally controlled by the consideration of span to effective depth which is given in 23.2 so we will uh, just type 23.2 Let to go to uh, the previous portion so yeah so we know these uh, conditions of um, the ratio for different l body ratio 7 20 26 so these things will uh, also guide the design of a flat slab see in this topic thickness is guided uh, by that effective depth to uh, ratio span to effective depth ratios given in 32.2 which you have seen now and for slab with drop 
conforming to 31.2.2, which is given, uh, what is a drop, span to effective depth ratios given uh, in 32, 23.2 shall be applied directly. So, for the uh, design uh, in which the drops conform to these clauses, we can directly use the 23.2 clause. And uh, otherwise, uh, the span to effective depth ratios obtained in accordance with the provisional 23 point shall be multiplied with point. And so, if you're providing a drop as per this guidance, you can directly use the 23 point two. If you are not providing or it doesn't conform to the guidelines, you should multiply the value with point nine. For this purpose, the longer span shall be considered. Uh, the minimum thickness of slab shall be 125. So this should be the basic value, minimum value. Sorry. 31.2.2 uh, drop, um, which we know what it is. The drops when provided shall be rectangular in plan. So always should be uh, recommended to be rectangular. And uh, it should have a length in each direction, not less than one third of the panel length. So now we know what is a panel and the total panel, panel length will be equal to approximately the length, uh, center to center distance, distance between two adjacent columns. and the drop should be minimum one third of the panel. Uh, so it's a little bit like L by 3. Uh, for exterior panels, the width of drops at right angles to the non continuous edge and measured from the center line of the column shall be equal to one half the width of the drop and interior panel for the exterior uh, panels. Column head, uh, one other important title, uh, which is enlargement of the column head. The, when the column heads are provided, that portion of the column head which lies within the largest right circular cone or pyramid that has a vertex angle of 90 degree can be included entirely within the outlines of the column and the column head shall be considered for design purposes. See figure 12. You see that figure first. Yeah, so this uh, shows that different uh, definitions or different parts of a flat slab so we can see here the column column is here and uh, the the 90 degree angle is uh, shown here so that means the uh, only the column uh, enlargement which will come in this 90 degree uh, area should be accounted column uh, 90 degree uh, d by 2 is uh, 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 very important uh, uh, location for shear at a distance of d by d from the column face as uh, shown here uh, d is the total depth of uh, column so this is a slab without a drop there is no drop and a column without column head yeah so there, there, there is no column uh, head second one shows the slab with a drop and column head so this is the uh, slab and this portion similar cursor from here to here we have the drop and this is actually the column and we provided a column head which is uh, I am showing with my cursor. So this is the column head and the last one is a uh, Tulsi slab without drop because directly the column head is enlarged to touch the slab base and it, uh, it has a column with column head. So here is important. So, even we provided a column head like this, but I'm showing with cursor. This is the column head we provided. But as per the close, we can't use this much width from here to here. We can use only uh, with center 90 degree. So this will be our column head. Very clear, I'm showing uh, from here. This dotted line shows the exact width of the column head. So this portion any concrete in this area to be neglected in the calculations very important these are told uh, in the column head uh, provisions then uh, so these things uh, preliminary proportioning is uh, similar for both the design method direct strength method or so direct design method or even equivalent frame method and next comes the important one determination of bending moment so please keep in mind that in the direct design method, there are some equations or uh, thumb rules which are directly given to you for finding the bending moments. 
but in the case of equivalent frame method it is a real analysis that's the main difference so normally the the direct descent method will be having a, a very uh, fast procedure or you can quickly estimate on comparison with the equivalent frame method but it is not applicable to all uh, uh, conditions the direct descent method but the equivalent frame method be even it is tedious and long procedure it is applicable for all conditions so methods of analysis and design it shall be permissible to design the slab system by one of the following methods the direct design method as specified in 31.4 and equivalent frame method 31.5 in each case the applicable limitations are given in 31.4 and 31 Point five shall be met. Okay, uh, so then uh, the thing is coming. Uh, the bending moments in panels with marginal beam or wall. Okay, uh, so what will be the bending moments in panel with a marginal beam? That means uh, either a uh, small beam is given below that or the wall is encountered. When the slab is supported by a marginal beam. Uh, with a depth greater than 1.5 times the thickness of the slab so that means if there are some uh, beam then automatically the slab will get stiffened <clears throat> then the total load to be carried by the beam or wall shall comprise those loads directly on the wall or beam plus a udl distributed equal to one quarter of the total load of the slab so this should be the design guidelines the bending moments on the half column strip adjacent to the beam or board shall be one quarter of the bending moment for the first interior column strip. So these are the provisions ex uh, exclusively for the uh, bending moment for panels with the marginal beam and board. Yeah. Then comes the transfer of uh, bending moments to columns how it is transferred so in the first part of the de inner design we will see bending moments for the panels for the strips column strip uh, the middle strip then the panels then we will uh, see of transfer of these moments to the columns and designing the column um, so just written to this uh, when unbalanced gravity load uh, like uh, sorry gravity load uh, winch earthquake or any other lateral loads causes transfer of bending moment between slab and column the flexural stresses shall be investigated using a fraction alpha so it's for the case of a uh, transferring of moment from the slab to column under gravity or even lateral loaded so alpha is very important for that uh, transfer uh, equation alpha is equal to 1 by 1 plus 2 by 3 in root of a1 by a2 so in this one the things to be get familiar is a1 and a2 a1 is the overall dimension of the critical section for shear in the direction with the moment acts and a2 is the overall dimension of the critical section of shear transfers to the direction of the moment so these are the shear areas in direction and in perpendicular a slab width between the lines that are one and one and a half slab or drop panel thickness 1.5d on each side of the column or capital may be considered the effective d being the size of the column Concentration of uh, that is quantitative reinforcement over the column head uh, by closer spacing or additional reinforcement may be used to resist the moment on this section. So these are the uh, this, uh, detailing provision. Basically, calculation of uh, the moment transfer from slab to the column as well as the reinforcement guidelines for a proper connection between slab and column. Okay, uh, directly to the direct uh, design method 31.4.1 so first the code states the limitations the slab system designed by the direct strength method sorry direct design method uh, shall fulfill the following conditions there shall be minimum of three continuous spans in each direction very important three continuous spans in each direction that means that even 
this can be a corner slab but uh, it, it can be a purely corner slab because column uh, corner slab has two uh, discontinuity but the inner will be having uh, inner uh, just will show through the paint so say suppose um, Yeah. Suppose uh, this is this is the panel you are having. So this panel is having this edge discontinuous, this edge discontinuous. So this is not applicable for uh, applicable for direct design method. But even uh, this condition will be okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah. This is okay because this is having only one continuous edge, one discontinuous edge, and these are the continuous one. So this is the drawback of direct design method. We can't design the corner one. Shall be minimum of three continuous spans in each direction. The panel shall be rectangular and the ratio of the longest span to the shortest span within the panel shall not be greater than two because it should not be one way slab. It should be always two way slab. It shall be permissible to offset the columns to a maximum of 10% of the span in the direction of the offset now withstanding the provision B. Uh, the successive span length in each direction shall not differ by more than one third of the longer span. The end span may be shorter but not longer than the in interior span. So, so the basic uh, things, the design load, live load shall not exceed three times the design length. Also, it's a burden. It should not have uh, such a building where there are huge live load on comparison with dead load like uh, maybe for assembly buildings and for theaters where the live load is very high you can't rely on the direct design method so the more provisions into that uh, so 31.4 is entirely devoted to the direct design method then 31.4.2 is for finding the total design moment for a span. In the direct design method, total design moment of a span shall be determined for a strip bounded laterally by the center line of the panel on each side of the center line of supports. Uh, so the absolute post absolute positive and average negative bending moment in each direction shall be taken as m0 is equal to w l and pi h. So I told you in the direct strength method all the corresponding moment equations are given and you can estimate the value based on these expressions and that will be the uh, procedure. But in the case of equivalent frame method it is a direct analysis. It is a real analysis. We are taking in the total frame. We are dividing it into different different parts and analyzing for the moments. So in this case uh, m0 total moment w is the de design load on an area l to uh, l1 ln is the uh, clear span extending from the face of the column capitals uh, brackets or bolts but not less than 0.65 into l1 so basically the clear span from one column to co uh, next column with these guidelines uh, L1 is the length of span in direction of M0 and L2 is the length of transverse span which we have seen in the uh, previous uh, definitions L1 and L2 which is general for this code. Then if there is a circular support uh, it shall be treated as a square support. When the transverse span of the panel on each side of the a center line of support varies L2 shall be taken as average of transverse span. Uh, then when the span adjacent and parallel to an edge is being considered, the distance from the edge to the center line of the panel shall be substituted for L2. Then the negative and positive design moment. Negative design moment shall be located at a phase of rectangular support. Circular supports uh, being treated as square supports having the same area. So always you know the negative supports will be very near to the supports as it's a hogging moment. In an interior span, uh, the total design moments M0 shall be distributed in the following proportions. Negative is 0.65, positive is 0.35. In the end span, 
total design moment m zero uh, shall be distributed in following proportions interior design so interior uh, negative design uh, moment uh, points and five minus point one zero by one plus one plus sir one plus one by alpha c positive design moment also based on this alpha c exterior design exterior uh, negative moment also based on alpha c where the alpha c is the ratio of flexural stiffness of the exterior column to the flexural stiffness of the slab at a joint taken in the direction moments are being determined and given by alpha c is equal to is very important as the alpha c is uh, dependent or sorry it is uh, very important for finding these three moments sigma kc by ks k c sum of the flexural stiffness of the columns meeting at joint and k s is the flexural stiffness of the slab expressed as moment per unit rotation just a minute So that's expressions for alpha c. At one point, four point three point four shall be permissible to modify these design moments up to ten percentage. So long as the total design moment M C of the panel in the direction considered is not less than uh, that required by thirty one point four point two. This one. Thirty one point. Four point three point five. The negative moment section shall be designed to resist the larger of the two interior negative design moments determined for the spans framing into a common support unless the analysis made to distribute the unbalanced moment in accordance with the stiffness of the joining parts. Uh, the thirty one point four point four is on distribution of many moments across the panel width. So. Uh, Bending moments at critical cross section shall be distributed to the column strips and middle strips, as specified in thirty one point five point five. Moments in columns, columns built integrally uh, with the slab system shall be designed to resist moments arising from the loads of slab system. At an interior support, the supporting uh, members above and below the slab shall be designed to resist the moment M given by following equation in the direction proportional to the Stiffness of uh, stiffness unless a general analysis is made. M zero M zero is equal to so many uh, long equations provided. So these things we uh, referred. So uh, next one is very important. It's called as the effect of patch and loading. Uh, just to introduce that uh, you have the load acting on the structures which includes the dead load live load all such things are there so the uh, low on loading dead load is given uh, as designed or analyzed separately and uh, the live load is taken as a different load and then it is added to the total load so all are treated differently so in the case of the ratio of live load to dead load varies there is a requirement for the patch and loading in the Adjacent spans. So, in the direct design method, when the ratio of live load to the dead load exceeds 0.5, then there is some provision. The sum of the flexural stiffness of the column above and below the slab sigma case shall be such that alpha c is not less than the minimum alpha c minimum in table 70. So, these are the values given in table 70. If the sum of the flexural stiffness of the column sigma k c does not satisfy a, the poster design moments for the panel shall be multiplied by this coefficient. So alpha c is the ratio of a flexural stiffness of the columns above and below the slab to the flexural stiffness of the slabs at a joint taken in the directions and being. And determine given by alpha c is equal to sigma kc by sigma ks. 
so these are the guidelines for that uh, i'll take the uh, like the descent problem in the next video